Hello, everyone, and welcome today's, to today's uh, customer-focused webinar series. I'm Adriel Michaud, and I'll be today's presenter. Uh, today, we're talking about uh, a little bit about how to get more out of the active demand platform. One of the things that uh, people commonly do is one of the first steps that uh, uh, that they want to do when they when they get the platform is build a drip campaign. Maybe maybe after they they send their first emails, uh, they they start to want to string them together into these. Uh, uh, into these trip campaigns. So that's the idea with today's presentation. We're gonna review how that works. Uh, we're gonna go live into a, a, a live campaign, take a look at it, and then uh, we'll uh, we'll kind of go over some of the different details on analytics. Now, uh, today's presentation will be recorded. So if you found this handy and there's someone else in your company that you think would uh, gain a, a benefit from it, you can send them the link to the recording and uh, and they can watch the video as well. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to throw them into the GoToWebinar interface there, and we'll get to them as we go. So without further ado, I'm going to hop right into this presentation. So I'll do a little bit of presentation, and then I'll do a little bit of uh, of live demo uh, right inside the system. So um, when we talk about drip campaigns, uh, there's a couple of things we're going to go through. We're going to go through some best practices. I'm going to show some examples of what we use for drip campaigns. And then we'll talk a little bit about what to do after it launches. So uh, let's stop, start off with best practices. Now, when you're building a drip campaign, there's, there's kind of some helpful do's and don'ts to, uh, to a drip campaign. Drip campaigns uh, generally help prospects down a sales funnel. Although like we've got a lot of customers that do lots of uh, weird and wonderful things with our drip campaigns. And, and uh, basically any kind of sequence that you want automated uh, could be a, a good fit for it. Um, really, one of the things that I like drip, drip campaigns for is improving consistency. Um, there's there's lots of things that businesses do that's inconsistent, and by automating and adding some of this uh, uh, this structure to these uh, uh, encounters or these emails that we need to send to clients or text messages or whatever we're using in, in these uh, campaigns, uh, it really improves the consistency because the system will just always do it. Uh, it's important to set clear goals. Uh, the goal is never the, the goal should never be we want to do a drip campaign. The goal should be you know we we want to uh, help our customers learn more by sending them some learning uh, resources, or we want our customers to uh, get a positive after sale experience, or something that's that's a, a measurable goal. The strategy that you're employing is using a drip campaign to to go about that goal. Uh, think about how you want customers to get out of the campaign. So. That might be by doing the goal. Maybe maybe the drip campaign, the, the whole idea was to get the customer to download a PDF or uh, book an appointment with you. So it's important to think about how you want them to exit the campaign, um, as, as well as any other exit conditions, like uh, they unsubscribe or they email back or, or something like that. And then do take care of editing live workflows or, cam or campaigns, because you have to think about uh, where people are in each of those steps inside some of those campaigns. Uh, some don'ts, uh, definitely don't start off too complex. Drip campaigns don't have to start out as these like amazing do-all, uh, practically a person <laughs> campaigns that that, uh, that have all this crazy stuff in them. Uh, start with something simple. Um, uh, definitely don't use a workflow or a campaign as a better fit. So. Um, within the active demand interface, there's the lead processing area of automation, and then there's the campaigns area. Um, campaigns are generally what you want to use, uh, unless you have some sort of centralized processing. Lead processing would be a good example of something that you want centralized, uh, whereas uh, a drip campaign or sequence is definitely something that you want in a campaign. Um, and uh, yeah, that kind of leads into the last point there. Don't process leads inside a campaign because what will happen is you'll build one campaign, you'll say, ah, you know what? I think I want to lead out of this campaign. And then you'll build another campaign and another one and another one. And then later you'll be wondering, how did this person become a lead again? What's going on here? Is this going to be harder to follow along with what's going on if you include lead processing in each campaign? So that's why we recommend leaving those inside workflows. Um, when I said layer on the automation, don't start with something like this. <laughs> this could be the end goal. Maybe maybe you want uh, you know a, a campaign that has a lot of complexity in it at some point, um, but this should never be where you start, just because it's a it's a pretty daunting task to start with something uh, fairly complex. So we're going to give some simple examples here. Uh, so the first example, an an autoresponder uh, for a, for a web form, 
can be kind of like a drip campaign. It can have multiple steps in it and it can uh, do some of the things. And apologize if you're hearing, hearing some grinding so sounds because they're, uh, they're plowing snow outside my, my window here. Uh, but inside an autoresponder, after the form submit, you can choose to uh, build a campaign. And this is really handy if you need to do something like quick and dirty after they fill in a form. So I'll, sh I'll show some examples here. Um, let's say for in, inside that form, uh, we had a question. And the question was, are you interested in delivery services or potentially something else? So this is a decision I could put in that's going to kind of be like a choose your own adventure. If you choose this path, you're gonna go this way. And if you chose that path, you're gonna go another way. And this is one of the ways that you can really customize out what happens inside your campaign, which uh, per personally, when I think about marketing uh, and, and effective marketing, effective marketing is personalized. Effective marketing does uh, try to approach each person as an individual and not just blast everyone with the same stuff. So that's why we're trying to uh, drill down and, and focus on uh, on what we're delivering to everyone. So this is just, again, a decision that you could use to look at a form field and change what happens afterwards. And then it could look like something like this. So if they are interested in delivery services, they follow the green path, they get the delivery services email. If they're not interested in delivery services, and maybe the only other option was training services, I can send them down to the training services email. So again, just a quick example of, of one little decision. But when you start layering decisions on, you can start to build your campaign out uh, with a little bit more complexity. So uh, one example might be uh, a, a feedback form. Let's say you have a web form on, on your website or one that you send to customers via email every once in a while, and it's asking for feedback. Hey, how are we doing? Uh, rate us uh, one to five stars, give any comments on, uh, uh, on your experience with us. And most companies out there are looking for reviews on Google or Yelp or other places where, uh, where reviews happen. You could build a campaign like this to help guide customers to the right spot. So I'll, I'll, I'll kind of walk you through it. That first decision there, did they rate us five stars? So uh, this, this form, this feedback form that I'm looking at in this autoresponder, uh, it has a, how do you rate our, uh, how do you rate us one to five kind of a thing? If they rated, if they didn't rate us five stars, um, we're going to follow the red path down, and that's going to go in this in this case, it's going to go to the CRM, it's going to go to PipeDrive, and we're going to notify the customer service manager, hey, this customer isn't isn't happy. Maybe maybe follow up and, and see if there's something you can do to help here, uh, which is exactly what we'd want. We'd we'd want to uh, to follow up with unhappy customers and try to find out what we can do to to help them. This could just as easily be an email or a text message or however which way I need to notify that internal person of that uh, of that review. Now, if they rated us five stars, ah, let's treat them differently. This this person likes us. They really like us because they gave us five stars. Uh, let's email them and ask them to review us on Google or Yelp. Hey, thanks for the uh, review. Really appreciate it. Um, one of the things that we, that uh, uh, if you're willing to, we'd love if you can review us on Google or Yelp or uh, get app or G2 crowds or whatever the case might be. Um, so we send that email to that, to that prospect. And again, it can be customized. We can have that email come from the, uh, uh, the salesperson or from the account manager on the account, or we could just send it from a, a more generic, uh, uh, company email. It's entirely up to you. You can, you can pick who these emails are coming from. Uh, after that, I have a wait one week. And then I have another decision. Did they review us? And I can't actually say like active demand isn't, isn't like this omnipresent, uh, uh, overlord of the internet. I can't tell if they reviewed us on Yelp, but I can tell if they clicked on the link to review us on Yelp. So I can, I can make a decision based on that. If they didn't click on the review, uh, review us on Yelp link, um, I could ask for a review one more time. If they did click on it, I could choose to send them a thank you note. Hey, thanks for, uh, you know, helping to support us and helping us to uh, uh, helping other customers know what the software is like. So um, again, a real quick example of, uh, of what you can do. And just again, just to kind of follow up with, uh, with the framing of this, we've got decisions in there. 
we've got some actions where we're doing something, and we've got some wait states as well. So we can put a little bit of time in between just to give our customers the time they need to, uh, to follow up and do this. So uh, from here, I just want to jump over to a real quick little example of a, of a campaign and show you some of the things that you would need to do if you were building your own campaign. So one of the th first things you need to think about, I'm just gonna zoom in here so it's a little bit easier to see. One of the first things you need to think about is whether it's going to be uh, a user drip campaign or like a detected campaign where it's detected a change. Uh, personally, the I think that the user drip campaigns are an easier place to start because these ones are where you have either manually added a prospect one by one or you've uh, bulk, <clears throat> pardon me, bulk selected a bunch of prospects, let's say you've uploaded a list of 100 prospects, now you want to um, add a tag them all for the campaign, it's very easy in the contact screen to select them all and say add to this user drip campaign. You can also uh, choose to add them or remove them from campaigns inside other workflows. So that's all, that's all handy and that's one of the reasons why I recommend these to start with. Um, so we've got this, uh, uh, this user drip uh, where it starts off. And then we've got a two-day wait, and this this wait is uh, is right here. You can get access to them uh, inside the actions, and all you do is drag it on and connect it up. So we can choose to. I can't connect this one because there's, there's only one way out. But uh, uh, that's how you would uh, uh, add these wait states in. Uh, a couple different things to think about inside these wait states. Uh, you can choose to wait a specific amount of time. We could choose to wait until, ah, you know, wait until the first Monday. Let's let's send all these things out on Monday. That can be an option. Uh, if you want to, we could also say, I want to wait until the third day of the month kind of a thing. Uh, and then at, uh, I don't know, let's go 8, 8, 8 a.m. on the third of the month. Like these are all options that you can use for these wait states. Uh, the most popular one is just to wait a specific amount of time, and that could be like two days or whatever. Um, there's some other options down here. You could choose to wait until the predicted best send time for the prospect. So um, this is just using what Active Demand knows about the prospect. If Active Demand knows that the prospect typically opens their emails at 10 a.m., it would choose to, oh, okay, we're going to wait two days, and then we're going to send the email at 10 a.m. So it's going to send it to them when they're active, kind of hit them right at, uh, uh, and, and try to get at the top of their email inbox. Uh, another option you could choose is to use the predicted best send day for this uh, contact. Uh, so that's another option as well. Uh, so that's all about wait states. And then we can look at some different emails that we'd send. Now, when you, when you create this email, the first thing, you're not going to get this interface. You're going to get the uh, choose email template. So you're going to choose a template that you want. Uh, and then you're going to start loading up that email with, uh, with information. Why don't we go ahead and edit this one just so that um, we can show you how it's uh, easier than, uh, uh, than you may think. Now, when you're prepping content up for these, you could choose to uh, build one in Google Docs. You could choose to, especially if you're using working with multiple people, that's, that's something that you might want to do is uh, uh, just go build a, a Google Doc and um, a, a, a collaborate uh, on, uh, on, on writing there. Um, that's an option. Uh, and then once you're ready, come back here and uh, uh, put, in the, uh, put in the email content into all of the emails. Uh, the things you'll want to think about, what's the subject line? Try to think about um, what the prospect is looking for, what their desires are. Um, how your software or, or your product or service helps with those, um, and then uh, what you want out of them, what, what you want them to do as a next step. And our demo system is really taking its sweet time here, so I might just have to refresh that. So that's, that's an example of uh, uh, getting the, uh, the emails in there. Uh, let me, there we go. Uh, some other things to think about with these campaigns, uh, how to stop them or how to get them out of the campaign. So you can see here we have stop processing prospects once they've completed a goal, uh, which means like for this for this particular campaign, I don't I want to kick them out when they've done something interesting. So what's interesting? Well, if uh, if we want to deal with them with our CRM, that's interesting. Um, if they uh, 
reply to an email in this campaign. That's interesting. Let's let's stop the campaign. And there can be a wide variety of other things that you put in here. There's really uh, quite a few different options uh, uh, that you can choose for how you get them out of the campaign. Maybe they called in. Uh, maybe they clicked on a link that you that you wanted them to. Maybe they downloaded something. Maybe they uh, booked an appointment. Like these are all options that you can choose to uh, trigger off of and then get them out of that campaign. So those are a couple different options uh, that you might want to take a look into. Let's get back into here. So there's my there's my little mini review. Uh, next, I'd like to talk about some of uh, the our favorite campaigns that we have at Active Demand because I think that might help with uh, if anyone's out there who just isn't sure where to start or isn't sure what's possible. Uh, this could help kind of paint the picture of uh, of what you could do. Uh, now, one of the ones that I really like is uh, is this Facebook leads campaign uh, nurture campaign. So uh, if you're not familiar. Facebook lead ads are uh, are these really cool way of getting someone to fill in a form. Essentially, uh, the idea, the general idea is uh, uh, you have some uh, advertisement on Facebook, um, you have a form that they can fill out, and that form is easy to fill out because they can, it pre-populates with a bunch of the Facebook stuff that that Facebook knows. So you could pre-populate it with name, you could pre-populate it with company name, you could pre-populate email all these things can be pre-populated um which reduces the friction and makes it easier for people to fill in the forms uh that's good and bad i mean the, the the good thing is you get lots of form fills the bad thing is you get lots of form fills from people who are just kicking the tires and 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 they're not super interested in whatever the thing that you're doing so um one of the things i like is to uh is the ability to take these leads and then put them through a drip campaign or a nurture campaign to see if they're actually qualified leads, to see if they're actually a marketing qualified lead. So uh, the whole idea here is uh, these Facebook lead ads, if, 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 you're, if you have a low friction form, you may be getting people who are not really qualified leads. And what we need to do is we're gonna use a drip campaign to push them down past that boundary, get them to do something that's more interesting or more indicative that uh, they're, they are in fact a, a, a real customer, a real prospect. If I'm talking too fast because I've had like three cups of coffee, just let me know in the, in the questions area there. Uh, so it's, a, it's important to think about uh, what our exit conditions are and then we can just build it. Now this looks kind of complicated, but I'm just gonna step you through it. So the first step is uh, they filled in that form. So this is actually an autoresponder campaign that we're, that we're building here. They filled in the Facebook lead, lead form. Fantastic. First thing we do, thank you for downloading the eBooks. This, is, this campaign is specifically for access to an eBook. Uh, we immediately send them the eBook because that's what they filled in the form for. They, they did their, their part, we're gonna do our part. The next thing I'm going to do is check if they clicked on the email link. So you can see this, uh, this step here, this is actually a decision step. And this decision step is going to wait for a set amount of time. We could say two, three days. It's gonna wait for two or three days and check if they clicked on the link. Did they download the ebook? If they did download the ebook, the thing I want to do is I want a person from marketing to check if it's if it's any good. Hey, is this co company like really super awesome? And is it are they like a, a targeted company? So we're gonna send this through our, we use Slack here and, and we have an integration with Slack. So we're just gonna Slack marketing uh, channel and say, hey, uh, this company downloaded the ebook. And if it's a really cool company, maybe we'll let sales know. And we'll say, hey, this really cool company just downloaded this ebook. You might wanna reach out to Bob from Acme or, or, or whoever it is. Um, if the two or three days go by and they didn't click on the email, we're just gonna to go to the next step. And the next step is just gonna to be to wait a day. And then we're going to email them the next uh, email in the drip campaign. And this, this campaign has uh, additional emails that are all kind of related to that original ebook that they downloaded. So it's giving them the same kind of content that they signed up for in the first place. So we send that email and we do the same thing. We check if they clicked on the link, if they did click on the link, Hey, let's let uh, let marketing know. Maybe marketing can uh, can take a look at it, and if they're really really cool, we'll send them over to sales. 
And then we continue on. So we've got some more wait states in here. We've got some more emails. Now the result of this campaign is that uh, we just sit back every once in a while. Slack lets us know, hey, um, maybe this is a lead. T take a look at this and, and maybe send it on to sales, which is a really nice place to be if you're in marketing because uh, uh, it's passive. It's, it's, the system does a lot of work in helping to qualify these leads. We sit back and, uh, and the amount of work we have to do versus the amount of work that the system is doing is, uh, is stark. <laughs> we're, we're, we just kind of sit back and, and they're, they're handed to us on a silver platter and we keep the good ones and, and you know, the rest we just kind of leave in, in the system. So uh, it's a really useful way of taking, again, those high volume, uh, low friction leads and turning them into better quality leads. Uh, another campaign that you might want to do is a periodic survey. Um, uh, I, 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 my, my past was uh, working at a, a marketing agency and every once in a while with a couple of our customers, we would send like these yearly campaigns and it was kind of always kind of a pain in the butt. It's like, okay, we have to gather this huge list. We have to clean it, check who's unsubscribed. Then we have to build the email. Then we have to uh, send the email campaign out, get all these reviews. Some of the people just like just became customers a week ago. Some of the people have been customers for 11 months. Uh, and this is the first time we're surveying them. Not great. Whereas uh, something where it's a, a periodic survey that you're putting into automation, those people can go in at their own pace. So the first the, uh, survey that we send out at month three is the same timing for all customers. Every customer at their third month, they get the same survey. So we get that nice bit of consistency. And because we get that consistency, we can actually trend our customer service and trend our sales service and trend these things that are kind of difficult to say. Like every customer, every company out there says, we want our sales service to be excellent. We want customer satisfaction that's to, to, to be high, but you can't really understand whether that's working unless you trend it over time and you get some uh, uh, significant data that you can actually take a look at. And that's one thing that this does that, that, that helps quite a bit. So I'll show you what this looks like. Uh, so they come in through an account purchase. Again, this could be sales flagged them in the CRM. Yep, they are now a customer. It could be lots of different ways of coming in. And the first thing we do is wait three months. With this survey, this is a quarterly survey, we're not going to bug people uh, right off the hop with this uh, campaign. Next, we're going to take, so this is this is our survey <laughs> that we actually run at, at Active Demand. You probably wouldn't have this step if you do a quarterly survey. We check if people have logged in the last two months because generally, um, yeah, for, for reasons, who cares? Um, we check to see if they haven't got an email in the last 24 hours, and this is a wait state, so it waits until they haven't received an email in the last 24 hours from us, another one. And that's just because I don't want to double up on emails to, to customers. It's kind of annoying when, uh, when you get lots of emails from the same company in a short period of time. And then we send a feedback request. And this first one is the uh, three-month feedback request. I could choose to make this email come from the salesperson or account manager, or I could choose to have this email come from uh, just uh, plain active demand from a, from a company account, right? We wait three months, check to see that we haven't sent them an email for a while, send them another uh, uh, quarterly survey. Wait three months, check, send another quarterly survey. Wait three months, check. Now here, this is interesting because I've, uh, because everyone moves through this uh, on their own pace, customer one that, that bought in January, they're going to get this uh, this email in March. Uh, customer two that got this in uh, uh, July, they're going to get this in uh, September, October, whatever, <laughs> three months has passed there. Uh, so they, they go through at their own pace. When they come down here, it's been one year. And that's a really key time for a lot of customers out there because a, a lot of them do budgeting on a yearly basis. Maybe the purchase, dis, the decision to choose your product or service was on a, a budgetary decision. So it's a good thing to uh, make this a little bit of a larger review, make sure that you're still hitting out of the park what you needed to hit out of, of, of the park for the customer. Uh, you may even want to let the salesperson know, hey, this customer just hit one year. Maybe it's time to reach out to them uh, give them that uh, uh, that account management love and make sure that they um, uh, 
have their yearly goals set up. So easy to do. Once you have this thing set up, it just works. Like so again, here in marketing at Active Demand, I don't really look at this thing. It sends emails every once in a while. We we'll, we'll get a, a response, a feedback response. Uh, if it's and if it's a, a good response, we automate the please go review us on Google. If it's a bad response, we let customer support know so that customer support knows what's happening with the customer and they can uh, work to help them. Right. So again, super easy thing to set up, and and I'd highly recommend that. Uh, this be one of the drip campaigns you set up because getting consistent feedback on customer satisfaction is hard. This makes it a lot easier. Uh, the next one that I'd recommend is if you, oh, there we go, there it's popping up, uh, is if you if you get a new customer. So the post one sale process is very inconsistent with a lot of businesses out there. If you're a marketing agency, this is one that you can set up for your customers uh, that's gonna really increase the consistency. Uh, and really the, the, the consistency problems come in, okay, you, you want a deal, the, the customer signed the contract, they filled in the PO, whatever, whatever they did, now what happens? And if you actually look at how different salespeople treat this, you're gonna see differences. And those differences uh, may be for good reasons, but probably not. They're probably just style differences between the salesperson. Maybe this one uh, prefers to send this email one day afterwards, whereas this other person likes to send it the same day. You're gonna see all sorts of weird inconsistency between salespeople and how they handle uh, a, a one deal. Automating it, increases the consistency quite a bit. And again, we can send these, e we can have these emails appear to come from the salesperson or the account manager on the account. So there's no disadvantage really on that side of things. This is just going to really increase the consistency. Uh, this is also where we can handle common objections. So if we, if you process a lot of customers, if, if you're processing maybe not one customer a month, but maybe like 10 or, or 20 new customers a month, you can handle these common objections and kind of analyze what uh, what common problems customers have in their first month and try to help them with that. Uh, this is also where you could survey to to trend how how satisfied they are with sales. Um, and if you need to train your customers as part of using your product or service, this is also the time where you can start introducing that training. So here's an example drip for a new customer. And you can see it's just a straight line. There's no decisions in there. Uh, it just sends these things every once in a while. So we've got some wait states in there. We've got some decisions to wait until they haven't gotten an email recently, which are optional. Uh, and then we uh, uh, we just progress. If they were to unsubscribe, uh, we would kick them out of this campaign automatically. So another one to think about. Uh, the last one is uh, is an unresponsive prospect, someone that you've been trying to get a hold of. Um, maybe sales has been trying to contact them and it's just not working uh, and you need to process them in a consistent manner. Most uh, sales organizations, if you talk to a, a group that's got multiple salespeople, they should have a consistent process for handling this. Hey, you know, if a prospect is ghosting you, uh, like not responding or anything like that, uh, we want to do two calls and then three emails and then we're done. And that process can be made, can be automated. And that's one of the things that you can, uh, again, do for uh, for some of your customers out there with this uh, with this style of, of, uh, of automation. Uh, so for this one, uh, potentially we might uh, wait two days, send them an email, check if they clicked, um, and then continue on, do some, do some additional stuff. So I'm just giving really some ideas here to you on what you could do with a drip campaign. Um, and again, uh, customer success would be the best place to look for if you're looking for actual details on uh, on doing this. We've got some more text in campaigns. Um, again, this is a, a text-based one where we could, uh, a text message in could be the, uh, the trigger to get going on this. We have a blog post that outlines how one of our customers, uh, TopDraw did this for one of their customers to, uh, to really connect the, uh, the mobile world to uh, uh, to marketing, um, and it's a really interesting one. I'd, I'd highly recommend uh, checking that one out, uh, and so on and so forth. The the appointment processing campaign is uh, is another campaign that's kind of like a drip campaign, um, and, and so on. Okay, great. We've got our drip campaign. 
put it in, in practice. Uh, we've added people to it. It's sending emails. Now what? Well, there's a couple things that you might want to look into or consider. Um, when you're editing a, a, a live campaign, don't delete the wait states. Because if we imagine this is a live campaign. Uh, we've got 100 people that are in this. Maybe 30 of them are in this first wait state. Maybe 40 of them are in the second wait state. And maybe uh, you know an, a, another 40 are in that last wait state. If I delete this wait state, where are those customers? Where are those prospects? Oh, who, who knows, right? So uh, really the, the solution to this uh, is if you're going to edit live campaigns, um, just Keep in mind what's happening with those wait states and where those customers are. They're probably in some of those wait states, and we need to be careful about editing those out. So I've just kind of highlighted the the, the ones that you that we've got there. Um, really, if you're if you're going to drastically change a campaign, just duplicate it, make a new campaign, edit that one up, change all the stuff in it, and then stop people from coming in to the old campaign. And what that'll do is anyone who's still stuck in the campaign, they'll slowly work their way out, and this will slowly dr uh, uh, drizzle down to zero people in it, and the and the new one will slowly pick up the new customers. So that's one option of uh, of going through there. Um, things to check in the dashboards. Um, definitely, when when you're first starting out, take a look at participant uh, growth. You want to see people being added to the campaign. Uh, take a look at open and click rates in the emails. Um, take a look at unsubscribes. If you have any emails where the unsubscribe rate is very high, there's something wrong. Maybe they weren't expecting the email. Maybe the subject line is bad. Maybe there's something messed up in the email. So test those emails out and uh, and see what's causing it. And then look for responses as well. What, what, what are the customers emailing back? That can That can tell you a little bit about whether that drip campaign is good or not. Uh, there's a couple of different dashboards that you can use. Uh, participant growth or total participants is, uh, is the one that we have in the bottom left here. And that one's showing our, uh, our trend. Uh, and then the drip campaign dashboard that you can see inside the campaign is just on the right hand side there. And again, that can be a good one to look at as well. You can see uh, email open rates and you can see that compared to averages as well, just to see how it compares to other emails that you send out. So there's some really good stats in uh, uh, inactive demand to show this kind of stuff. Um, the other possibility is if you have a drip campaign that's like super duper important and you're always looking at optimizing it, you could uh, create a scheduled report that, uh, that covers that drip campaign. And if you're interested in that, I'm going to be doing a webinar on that in about a month. So uh, that'll, that'll be out in, uh, in March here. So um, the other ones that you might want to take a look at, the form report. The form report will show how many people have filled in forms. And if you have forms that are part of your drip campaign, that'll be where you, uh, where you find those. Um, <clears throat> just some, there's some last thoughts to, to kind of leave you with before we go for today. Try to test everything. Uh, you can use A-B testing to, uh, to test out your subject lines. Uh, you can try different subject lines to help improve the, the open rates. Um, and I would really strongly recommend heavily testing the subject lines because that's one of the key areas that makes for a good campaign or a bad campaign. <laughs> uh, try different content to improve, improve click rate. So that's inside. Once they've actually opened the email, what do we got to do to get them to to take the next step, do the next thing that we need to. Uh, and then lastly, make sure that landing pages match what, what was promised in the email. Um, and if you can, try to maintain, uh, this sounds weird, but maintain the scent between the email and the landing page. So if you're using green coloring in your emails, try to use that green coloring in the landing page. You want people, once they've clicked on the, the link in the email to, and, and gotten to the landing page, to feel like, yeah, this is this is what I expected. This 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 is still the same company. If it's drastically different, you may risk them just leaving. They'll they'll just bounce on the landing page or, or wherever you sent them. Um, so again, establish goals first uh, for the emails. If you're if you're reproducing something or automating something that uh, uh, that is a a process right now in your company, talk to the subject matter experts or the SMEs. Uh, to ask about timing, number of times to reach out, 
uh, monitor those campaign exits to see how people are getting out. Uh, and then again, think about how they get out of those campaigns. So if you want to learn more about uh, about ActiveMan and using the platform, uh, we have a learning management system at learn.activedemand.com. That's also where you can get certified by Active Demand uh, and, uh, and get a, a cool certificate that you can print up and says that you're marketing automation certified with Active Demand. Uh, we've also got Active Demand on YouTube. If you're more interested in the videos, uh, generally the, the videos will give you a little bit more context on why you need to do those things and, and kind of show you how. Uh, and then as well, there's engage.activedemand.com where you can engage our support. So uh, if you have any questions or if you have a, a drip campaign that, you've, that you'd like to start up and you're just interested in a little bit of training, by all means, reach out to, uh, reach out to customer success through that engage.activedemand.com. Uh, so that ends my presentation.